Hello everyone, this is Nikita. Thank you for joining me in this video. I know I'm making this video after a few days, but uh, I was not well and my eyes were not well. So I took a conscious decision to take care of my eyes to rest for a while uh, so that I can uh, get up again and make good quality videos for you all. So that's why I was away from few days. Uh, but now I'm back and you will see a lot of videos coming in in the coming weeks. Uh, so to start with, uh, today I would talk about service packages in Pega. So in the coming days, you would see many videos on services and then connectors would follow. I hope this would be useful for you, for your interview as well as for your day-to-day -day, um, application uh, which you are working on. So that is my intent. Let's see how it all goes. So let's start and jump into our today's video. Uh, hello everyone. So today's topic is about service packages in Pekka. So this is uh, first in the line of different videos I would make on services and connectors basically on integration. So uh, service, service package, why it is necessary? First of all, we'll discuss on that uh, why it is necessary and do we need to create service package for each service? Okay, so basically what is a service? service is uh, is our like if we have it in our pega platform if we create services in our pega platform basically others other applications can access our uh, our uh, data or our uh, whatever we want it to be exposed to the outside so that is basically uh, done through an api okay so we will create an api in our application so that other users can uh, can access the data in our application through those APIs. So basically that is a service. We are providing a service to others by uh, exposing our data. So that's what service is. So now coming to service package. Why a service package is needed? Okay, so this is also a very important interview question. So I would advise you to please uh, uh be in this video for the entire duration okay so service package is needed because uh, we are basically exposing our service to the outside world but uh, we need some kind of authentication mechanism uh, to see to whom we want to expose our data to not all the uh, people not all the people needs our data right so there are some set of uh, authentication uh, we need to set in our service so that it doesn't get into the wrong hands our uh, data does not go into the wrong hands so that's where service package comes into picture so we when we create service package we we can do some kind of configuration in our set of services so that this is uh, basically exposed in a correct way to the outside world so let's jump into our application and we'll see uh, how the service package looks like. Okay. So here is my application. Let me open all the service packages uh, to give you an overview. Where do we see the service package? This comes under records. Then we go into um, integration resources and then service packages. Okay. So we have to go to integration resources and service package. So here we'll see the list of service packages in our application. So I have created one which is named as test package. Let's go through this uh, first and understand what are the different things that uh, service package has. Okay. First of all, uh, what uh, what is the processing mode? So there are two processing mode which can be set. One is stateless and one is uh, stateful. Other is stateful. So basically uh, when when uh, other application is accessing our service uh, they can do it in uh, corresponding different number of uh, calls okay so if we want the calls to be uh, like one data or one clipboard data to be shared to the other uh, other second access clipboard data. So this kind of data sharing, if we want within subsequent uh, API calls, then we uh, can make it as a stateful, okay? But if it is a stateless, basically each and every API call is independent 
and it has its own uh, data and the data gets removed after the API call is done. So that's what the difference between stateless and stateful is. So I hope this is clear. It's very important. The whole service package is very important in terms of interview. Uh, you'll get a lot of questions from here. So please, please, uh, uh, you know, do understand every part of it. Okay. Let's go to the next part, which is service access group. As I told you already, uh, why it is required? We need some authentication mechanism to see who uh, who is calling our API is basically a user which which is authenticated. Okay, so we want the uh, API to be exposed to them. Okay, then only we will expose our data, right? So if suppose uh, that the person shouldn't be actually uh, watching our data, we should not. Uh, go and expose it to them. So that's why it is, uh, we need some kind of authentication mechanism. Here we do it through our access group, okay? So we can set uh, the access group, what uh, kind of uh, uh, level of access we want that uh, uh, service to have, right? So that's done through access group. We can set uh, the privileges criteria in this access group, okay? So here we have set the requires authentication and we have set the access group which we want uh, to leverage here. Now coming to authentication type, there are three different kind of authentication type within the service packages. Basic is the basic authentication. Basically the person or the uh, outside application who is accessing uh, our service should have the username and password uh, set there. So we will provide some username and password and they should use that whenever they are accessing our service. So this is a basic authentication mechanism. Then they are OAuth and uh, custom authentication also we can set but uh, that's for the advanced uh, we will cover in some other uh, day. But coming to uh, basic authentication I hope that is clear. Uh, this is basically the uh, user ID and password or the operator ID and password which um, the other end or the the person or the service which are accessing our service okay the application which are accessing our service should have okay so you should be familiar with these three with these main uh, mainly okay uh, these are not that important suppress or show HTML is basically in, in suppose in your activity somewhere you have used show HTML right so those would be suppressed, okay? So you would be having uh, the activity where there won't be any HTML uh, coming or popping up in between. So it won't be there. So this is like for reusable mechanism. Sometimes we want to use the same activity for uh, showing uh, to your user as well as for the services. So in that time we can use this. Okay, uh, this is also not, not that important. It's basically when you don't give any content type as the request, when the request is not giving any content type, then uh, uh, this REST request will understand it as binary data. We'll see this some other day, okay? Now coming to methods, okay? So package, when we say service package is basically a bundle of different services, right? So uh, we have different kind of services. We can have a REST services, we can have a SOAP services, and for service file also we can have for file listener and all, right? So there are different kind of services and each of them have to be bundled in a different package. Suppose if you have a uh, the five type of REST services, it should be bundled in one service package. And then there you have some two or three service file that should have a different service package created. So basically, uh, both should be different. You can't club them, okay? So you will see uh, service rule service rest here, right? You will not see anything else. So that's what it is. Uh, monitoring is basically when you can set a different, uh, you know, monitoring mechanism in here. Uh, on, we can on it and there are some DSS which is controlled uh, through this. The, the monitoring is controlled through those DSS or dynamic system settings. So you can on and off this. Basically for a lower environment, you can on this to test your services and in the production, you should off it. Otherwise you will have a lot of logs generated. So this is um, because of that. So here you will see uh, different services which you have created under this service package. 
and there would be versions like when we create a service rest you will uh, see that there is a version you have to give there okay resource path rule set this we would see when we create a service rule okay when we create a service rule we'll see what all things we have to give uh, to while creating the service rule okay so that's it and then there is pooling uh, let's understand this because this is very important uh, basically uh, you can have some set of uh, requesters okay active requesters which can be uh, uh, can be present simultaneously or at the same time okay so uh, when we give it as 10 active requesters so there can be 10 active requesters uh, which can use our service at the same time basically what is a requester whenever there is this uh, uh, services right for that we have a different kind of requester like for browser we have a different requester type created likewise for service we have a different app requester created right so and those service requesters which gets created it can only be 10 at the same time if there is more than 10 then it has to wait then it has to wait uh, for the other requester to complete its processing so that's what it is so maximum active requester it can also be unlimited you can give it as minus one if you give it as minus one then you can have as many number of active requester at, uh, you want but that will not that will not be good for your application because it will have a uh, you know it, it can have a lot of requesters getting created and it will um, decrease the uh, processing power or decrease the application performance so you shouldn't be doing that an idle requester is also something like uh, after active request like if there is no act uh, there's no place for a requester to come in and sit in the active requester then it has to go and sit in the idle requester so there is a bucket of 10 requesters which can be there in the idle requester okay so that's what it is so uh, whenever the active requesters you know uh, whenever the active requester or requester completes its processing it go and uh, set, sit in the idle requester so that's what it is so i hope this is clear uh, so whenever i'm trying to connect uh, or uh, you know call this service what will happen is i will i will have a requester gets created and will sit in the active requester maximum wait in seconds is basically when uh, you have uh, tried to call this api and uh, uh, since the active requester is filled up uh, how for how much time you can wait there otherwise you would be timed out basically uh, it would give you an error that you cannot access the service because the uh, requester pool is filled okay so that's what it is in seconds 10 seconds is the maximum wait time it has been given so normally the service uh, services right it takes hardly few milliseconds to get completed so um, this 10 seconds is also a good time okay so that's that's it about uh, different uh, type of requesters so uh, this is basically the important thing you should remember in service packages in the next video we will talk about services and uh, how we start uh, creating service from the scratch creating uh, classes for uh, requests classes for response and then how do you uh, you know how do you create the service activity what are the different methods in the service uh, rest because we would be talking on service rest mainly because that's uh, majorly used and also asked in interviews so that's it for today i hope this was uh, helpful to you uh, i know i would come uh, cover the next part of services in the coming videos please stay tuned till then thank you for joining me in this video see you again take care bye bye